Welcome to today's Milwaukee Minute. Today I want to look at the third and final temptation of Christ uh, as we kind of wrap up this short uh, three-minute series that I've done. If you would turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to be looking in verses 8 through 11. And it reads, Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Satan said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall, not, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only sh uh, sh you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Okay. So, if you recall, the first temptation, he's come from his baptism into the wilderness. Forty days, forty nights, he's fasted. Uh, he, he's tempted to use his power to turn rocks into bread. Uh, he cites scripture in his defense. He's then taken and the tempter uses uh, a scripture pulled out of context to tempt him to throw himself off of the temple and demonstrate that he's God. He again uses scripture in context this time. Well, every time Christ uses it, it's in context. But in context, as opposed to what the temptation was, to overcome that temptation. Now he's being taken on a mountain. He's being shown all of the nations of the world and their glory, it says. And he's being offered it. Now you and I sit there and go, what kind of temptation is this to God? What kind of temptation is this to Christ, the Messiah, the King of everything? Well, I'll tell you what kind of temptation it is. He's saying, all you have to do is bow down to me, and you don't have to go to the cross to die to be able to have your place as the king. That's a big temptation. But what does Christ do? He again turns to Scripture. Now, when we think about that in our life, we think, you know what? I don't have to worry about... Uh, Satan offering me to be ruler of the world and me recognizing that I'm the Messiah and, and so forth. Because guess what? We're not. But what about this? What about when we know that we have been called to do something, but it seems to be hard work, it seems that there's going to be sacrifice to get there, and then there's a temptation to do it a shortcut way. kind of go around the way things should be. What about that? That's exactly what's going on here. We again, we need to be steeped in Scripture so that we can recognize when a shortcut is violating Scripture. When a route to where we think we're being called by Christ is the wrong route. We can recognize it if we are steeped in Scripture like Christ was. Of course, he overcame the temptation and he was able to take his role as the Messiah. It's important that we, we read this and we remember this because there are several things that we can remember from this. One is that through Scripture, we are able to overcome temptation when we are steeped in the Scripture. But the second thing is that we know that Christ, the Messiah, God the Son, came to earth and he suffered the same things we suffer. He suffered temptation just like we suffer. He had a temptation uh, to fulfill a physical need in an appropriate way. Uh, he had a temptation to show how special he was with his relationship to God. Uh, to show off to the people around him. He had a temptation to gain power and to take shortcuts. These are the same temptations that we face in our daily lives. He overcame them through Scripture. He is an example to us on how to overcome them, but, but he is also a reminder 
when we go to him in prayer, seeking strength to overcome temptation, <coughs> that he has overcome that temptation himself. That he is the God who's understanding of where we are, of the fact that we are suffering under these temptations. And finally, it's an encouragement to us because we can see that not only is he a God who understands our temptations, who showed us the way out of the temptations, but as we see through the rest of Scripture, he's a God who gracefully will show us forgiveness when we fall. He's a God who understands the temptations that we see, and he has offered us, through his resistance of the temptations and obedience to the cross, he has offered us a way to overcome and a way of forgiveness and escape for our failures to measure up. The next thing I want to look at uh, as we move forward is I want to look at the Sermon on the Mount, which of course follows this passage. And it's important to see that here we have Christ who's just overcome these temptations and when we get into the Sermon on the Mount, he's going to be telling us how to live and how to overcome. I'm excited about looking forward to that in the coming weeks. But first, let's go ahead and let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you came, that you were, you suffered temptation as a man, that you overcame it, that you're an example to us, and that you offer us grace when we fail. Lord, I pray that you would uh, help us to see your grace in our failures, but also to see your example strengthen ourselves in you and in your Lord. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.